In this video we make some consumables. By the end of the video you can expect to have a coin which increases your score by one point, a poison which damages your player health, a heart which regains your player health, a mana potion which increases mana, and a stamina potion which increases stamina. If you're new to my channel and you're just dropping in on this video, I'm a game developer currently putting out Unreal Engine 4 and Blender content to help my viewers. If you have any tutorial requests, or you see anything on this list of topics that I'm covering that you're interested in, it would be so awesome if you dropped this sub. It really supports me putting out content. If you're just here for some quick knowledge on what I'm covering today, that's also cool. Regardless, I hope you enjoy the video. Good morning everyone and welcome to episode 10. We are one third of the way through the tutorial series. I hope you guys are enjoying it and I hope you're managing to keep up. For anyone who's not been following the tutorial series and is just tuning in on this episode, I need you to watch the end of episode seven where we make this rotating coin. And I also need you to watch episode nine where we make the HUD. Because we're gonna be picking up the consumables and changing the health to stamina and the mana, you need to have this done. And we're also gonna be duplicating the coin blueprint we made. So if you could watch those first, then tune into this, it'll make a lot more sense. And as always, I've whipped you guys up some more free assets. So check the description, download them, import them, add some materials to them, and I'll see you guys when that's all done. So these are the consumables we're going to be working with today. We've got a poison guy which is going to damage our character, we've got a heart which is going to heal our character, and we've got a mana potion and a stamina potion which is going to regain our mana and stamina. So the first thing I want you to do is make these into blueprints like we did with the coin. So what we can do is go onto content, blueprints, and we can duplicate our coin. I'm just going to show you an example, then you guys can do the rest. So we'll call this heart, we'll change the static mesh to the heart, give it a, a nice color, and now when we drag this heart in the level, it should respond in the same way the coin does. So it goes up and it goes down. So do that for the rest of them, and I'll see you guys afterwards. There we go, that's all working nicely. If for some reason your mesh just keeps on going up and it doesn't go down, go onto your blueprint and change this equals 50 to equals or greater than 50. So basically what's happening is we want to send the static mesh back down when it got to a value of 50, but if the value for some reason skips over 50 and goes 50.2, this isn't going to trigger. So this is now saying if it's 50 or above, then send it back down. So once you change that to if Z is greater than or equals to, it should work. If your static mesh keeps on going down, you can change this to less than or equal to zero. So then regardless of if it lands on zero, it will still go back up. Okay, so they're all looking cool, but these potions, they're just spinning around uh, straight up and it doesn't look very cool. It'd be good if we could do it from an angle. And you'd think if you just rotated it by 10, it would work. But as we're doing the relative Z, regardless of where we rotate it, it's still going to be going straight up relative in the blueprint. So what we actually need to do is go into the blueprint and then add a scene. So now we can apply all the rotations and the location changes to the scene, but then attach the mesh to the scene and then just rotate the mesh by 10 degrees. So now if we go into our event graph, everywhere it says static mesh, delete it and then replace it with the scene. And now we can see that our bottle turns around. Once you've got it spinning, then you can tweak things like the amount it rotates, the speed it rotates by, the speed it goes up by, or how much it goes up by. But I think just increase the rotation to maybe 1.5 and that looks a little bit better. Okay, now do the same for the other potion and I'll see you guys afterwards. Okay, when you're happy with your consumables, when you've got them spinning the right amount and going up and down the right amount, now we can begin to blueprint the consuming of them. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up the poison and add a box collision to the poison mesh. Make sure it is actually on attached. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is open up the poison and then under viewport, static mesh, add a box collision. Make sure the box collision is attached to the static mesh because obviously it's going to rotate. And then just get it covering the whole mesh like so. 
Okay, now in the event graph, under the box, we're going to add a begin overlap. So the first thing we want to do with this overlap is make sure that only the player can overlap it, right? We don't want just a random object overlapping it and doing stuff with it. So what we can do is bring in a branch with holding B and click, plug that in, and then our third person character is an actor, so we're going to drag off this and type in equals. Then if we plug this branch in here, this is basically saying it will only come true if this box is overlapping with what we put in here. So what we need to put in here now is a reference to our third person character. So as I mentioned in the last episode, we can actually cast to the third person character. If we convert it to a pure cast, which basically means you just don't need to connect it through so it doesn't, it's not part of the system, you're just using it as a reference. Then if we plug this in here, then we can use the get player character to make this reference. So now this is only gonna fire off if we're overlapping the third person character because it's an actor. So the next thing we wanna do is actually take away health from the third person character. But in the last episode, we didn't do health. So the first thing we're gonna do is just open up our third person character, make a variable called health, link it to a float, compile, set it to 100, then back in our widget that we made in the last episode. Under the health bar, we're gonna bind the percent so you know how to do all this because we did it in the last episode. We're going to bring in the character get health divide it by 100 to bring it on the same scale then plug that in like so. Okay so now we've got a variable which will change the progress bar of the health. So now in our poison with this third person character we can actually get health if you can't see this, just make sure that you've compiled your third person character. And we don't actually want to get the health, we want to set the health, actually, and we need to get the health, because we want to get the health and then minus 20 from it, and set that as the new health. And we then want to destroy the actor, because after we've consumed it, we don't want to be able to reconsume it again. So we're just going to type in destroy actor. Now if we test this out, when we go over our poison here, we lose 20 health. Pretty cool. Let's do the rest of them. So all the consumables follow a very similar bit of code. So if we just copy the entire thing from the poison, then if we open up our next one, such as heart, Control V to paste it, Control C to copy. Then we just need our box here, so add a box collision to the heart. Again, make sure it's attached to it, something like that. And then instead of minusing 20 from the health, we want to plus 20 from the health. Now let's do the mana and stamina potion. So just paste it in again. Add a box collision, and then we're going to be changing the mana. And then we're going to be plusing 20. And then we're going to be setting the mana, not the health. And we're going to be setting it as the new thing plus 20. Then same again for the stamina one. Add a box collision. Then instead of health, we want to set stamina. Uh, I can't remember what I think I called it. Energy. Set energy. So we need to get the current energy and then we need to plus 20 onto it. And then we want to destroy it. We may have the issue that when we try and pick up this consumable, 
that we, we can't actually overlap the box because the static mesh heart is blocking us. So what we can actually do is change collision preset to instead of block all, just change it to no collision. So I do that for each of the static meshes. So everything is working fine. The only problem is that when we collect the heart, we're actually plussing 20 onto the health when we're already at 100% health. We need to implement a check method to see if we're already at the maximum amount of health and if we are not to do anything. So this will actually be an issue for the mana, the energy and the health because all of them could rise above 100 if we collected a potion. So what we need to do is just have a little check. So what we can do is add a custom event and just call this value checker. So then we can get the mana. If the mana is greater than 100, we can put this in a branch and then we can set the mana to back to 100. Then we can do the same for everything else. So if we just duplicate this, if the health is over 100, if the energy is over 100, we can set the health and the energy back to 100. So if, if you alt drag your variables, then you can set them, control drag them to get a variable. I've already mentioned this numerous times, but repetition is how you get this down. So if the mana is more than 100, we're going to set the mana back to 100. If it isn't more than 100, we're just going to continue. Same with the health. If the health is more than 100, we're going to set the health back to 100. And then move on to the energy. So now what we need to do is go back onto our consumables. And then after we've changed the health, we just need to call the value checker. So we can check if we've increased the health over the maximum health. And if we have, it will just reduce it back to 100. So now we need to do this value check for the mana potion as well. Okay, one way to figure out if this has worked is with our friend, the print string. So what we're going to do is event tick, then we're going to print, and then no matter what you plug into this print, it will actually convert it into a string. So if we grab this health float, if we just drag this into here, it will then get converted into a, into a string, into a word. And then if we play this, our health is 100. Then when we collect the heart, our health is still 100 because the value checker saw it was over 100. It got increased and then it got set back to 100. Now if we get this poison, our health is 80. So if we actually uncheck this value checker, just stop it from doing anything. You will now see why we need it. When we get the health, our health increases to 120. So our health bar looks like we're at 100%, but then when we get the poison, we go down to 100% when it should really be 80. So that is why we need the value checker. I hope you guys understand. Let me know in the comments if you understand what I'm on about. That'd be cool. So I think these consumables need a new room. So we're gonna go through this Egyptian door here and bust out a new room. I'm not gonna show you how to do this because you guys are more than equipped now to do it yourselves, but just copy paste everything. I'll see you guys on the other side. Okay guys, we've got the new room. We've put some of the consumables all over the room. Now let's see if this works. Let's just burn off a bit of stamina and get the stamina potion and it goes up. With the mana potion, it goes up. We take some damage, the health doesn't regen, but then when we get these hearts, there we go. Okay, so we've got all the consumables, which changes the mana, the stamina, and the health. But what about score? What about the coins that we made? We want those to increase our score. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to put our score in our health and energy bar. So we're going to drag in a text. Under text, we're going to write score in here, then with a dash, going to put size to content, then we're going to add another text, and this one at the top, we're just going to call this score num, and then we're going to bind it, because we want the, the text to change as our score goes up, so we're going to bind it, create binding. So what we'd usually do is when we overlap the coin, in the character we'd have a score variable which goes up every time we overlap one, just like all the other ones we've done, right? But 
What if our character dies and then he respawns? Would we want the score to go back to zero or would we want the score to remain the same? Uh, you could have it that it resets back to zero, like game over, start fresh, but you may want the score to remain the same. So that means we can't store it in the third person blueprint. We can't store it in the character. So you may be asking me, well, where the hell are we going to store it then? And I'm going to explain that to you now. Let me introduce you to the game mode. It's quite a, a scary thing, but um, you'll get used to it very quick. So we're just going to throw this in blueprints and we're just going to right click new folder and just call this game mode. So the game mode is basically just like a blueprint. It's a blueprint which controls the score and the settings and the rules of the game. So we're going to right click, create a blueprint class and we're going to create a game mode. So you can see here how it defines how the game is being played, its rules, its scoring and other facets of the game type. So we're going to create one of these and we're just going to call this game mode. So double click to open this up and then in the event graph we're going to create a variable. Can you guess what we're going to call it? We're going to call it score. Then we're going to change this to an integer because our score is going to be a number and that's all we're going to do here. All we want to do is store the score here. We don't really want to increase it here. We want to do that in the coin. So we're just going to store it here. Then we're going to go into our health and energy bar and we're going to cast to game mode. Actually, go back into the third person, rename this to something a bit more specific like game mode beard or something. Just something which isn't game mode because there's two game modes which we could actually call. So delete this, then cast to game mode beard. So we're going to convert this to a pure cast because we don't want to. Um, we don't want to put any nodes through it, we just want to use it as a reference. And then just like the player character, the game mode is another one where we can just use a single node to get a reference. And we can use get game mode. Just like we've got the get player character, we can get the game mode here without using the get actors of class and without using the, the eyedropper. So now we're going to get the score. And then we're going to plug that into there. So that's everything done. We've linked the score in the game mode to the number. So now when the score in the game mode changes, our score will change. So the next thing we need to do is actually tell our game that we want to use this game mode. We want to use this set of rules. We want to use the game mode that we've just created. So what we need to do is go in Windows and get the world settings. If you've already got it checked, your world settings will be here. And all we want to do is put in our game mode, so game mode beard. And you'll notice now, when you actually play, we're playing as just a little spectating guy. And that's because default pawn class, that is our character. That is what we're going to spawn in as. And that will have a little bit of a part to play when we're doing our character selection screen. So for now, we're just going to type in third person character. I'm just going to move this player start into this other room. Unfortunately, my engine crashed, so I lost my room, which sucks. But what can you do, eh? So we've linked our game mode to our game now, that's good. So now we just need to increase the score with our coin. So we're going to drag our coin in here and we're going to do the same as what we did to the other blueprints. We're going to add a box collision to it, so add a box collision, scale it up so it covers the width and stuff. Under our static mesh, we're going to turn off the collision, so we're not going to run into this coin and get stopped by it. Then under the box, we're going to on component begin overlap, because when we overlap the box, we want to do something. We want to get our game mode, so we can get game mode. Then we can cast to game mode. So now we've got a reference to it, and that means now we can get the variable score. So we can set score, and what do we want to do? We want a plus one to the score every time we over overlap it. So we, we get the score, and then we plus one to it, and then we plug that into there, and we kind of want to do the same thing we did with the other blueprints where we only want 
the player to be able to overlap this box. We don't want anything else in our level to be able to overlap it. So if you quickly go into your blueprint, copy all this, where it's the branch and the third person character reference, throw that in here. So now this will only trigger if we overlap it with our player, nothing else. Then we increase the score by one every time we overlap the coin. And now let's test this out. So if we play our level, we've got the score here. And if we overlap this coin, it goes up to one. We nailed it, guys. We did it. I think that's all the consumables. Oh, we actually forgot to put on the destroy actor afterwards. So we can do that now. Destroy actor. So now the coin will destroy itself after we've gone over it. So yeah, there we go. And so guys, that is everything for this video. We've got the poison, which damages our health. We've got the mana potion, which increases our mana by 20. We've got the stamina potion, which increases our stamina. We've got the coin, which adds to our score. And everything is starting to come together now. It's looking really cool. It's exciting. You should be excited. So anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for all the support again. The support means so much to me. You don't understand how much it means to me. Every day I'm waking up, checking my subscribers and comments and everything. It's really making me have a great time. So thank you for that. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.